नायमत्मा प्रवचने न लभ्यो न मेधया न बहुना श्रुतेना या मे वैश्य वृणुते तेन लभ्या तस्यैश आत्मा विवृणुते तनुं स्वां This self cannot be known through much study, nor through the intellect, nor through much hearing. It can be known through the self alone that the aspirant prays to. This self of that seeker reveals its true nature. Shankaracharya's Tika I am Atma, this self, Nalabhyaha, is not to be attained, is not to be known. Pravachanena, through the acquisition of many Vedas, and Namedhaya, not through intellect, through the power of grasping the meaning of texts. Nabahuna Shutena, not through much hearing alone. How is it then to be known? This is being said. Yameva, that self, indeed, which is his, that is, the aspirant's own self, which, eshaha, this one, the aspirant, vrnute, prays to, tena, by that, by that very self, which is the seeker himself, the self itself is labhyaha, can be known, that is, it becomes known to be such and such. The meaning is that to a desireless man who seeks for the self alone, the self becomes known of its own accord. How is it known? This is being said. Eshaha, this self, tasya, of that seeker of the self, vivrunute, reveals, svam, its own, its real, tanum, body, that is, its own nature. There is this further fact. Navirato dusharitam na shanto na samahitaha na shantamana sovapi pragyane nainamapnuya One who has not desisted from bad conduct, whose senses are not under control, whose mind is not concentrated, whose mind is not free from anxiety about the result of concentration, cannot attain this self through knowledge. And the tika, na avirataha, not one who has not desisted, dusharitat, from bad conduct, from sinful works, either prohibited or not sanctioned by the Vedas and the Smritis. Na ashantaha, nor one whose senses are not controlled, one who has not turned away from the lure of the senses. Na asamahitaha, nor one whose mind is not concentrated, one whose mind is scattered. Na nor one whose mind may be concentrated, but still who is ashanta manasaha, whose mind is not at rest because of hankering for the result of concentration. Apnuyat can attain, enam, this self that is being considered. Pragyanena, through knowledge of Brahman. But the man who has desisted from bad conduct, as also from the lure of the senses, whose mind has become concentrated, and who is also free from anxiety about the results of concentration, and has a teacher, attains the aforesaid self through knowledge. This is the idea. Namaste. So, in these two verses, death defeats the Neo-Advaita philosophy. Neo-Advaita, in case you don't know, 
is a philosophy that says it's all one, we're all God, so there's no need for sadhana, no need for anything, we can just do whatever we want, and whatever we wish for comes true, and blah, 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 like that. <laughs> no, sorry. The self cannot be known through much study, nor through the intellect, nor through hearing. Huh? It can be known through the self alone. In other words, the aspirant, the sadhaka, prays or meditates on his own self because he is the self. We all are. Not like the self is someplace out there, you know, in some other world or something. No, it's right here, right now. In an earlier verse, he says, the self lives in the midst of suffering, uh, in the midst of maya, in the heart of every sentient being. So how is this possible? <laughs> Because although the self appears to be covered by upadis, by ignorance, by different forms of conditioning and so on, actually is never covered. The reason is that the self is never the object. The self is always the subject. Meaning the one who is aware, the seer, the drik. So, since that's the case, we are all the self, we are all Brahman, and the only reason we don't realize it instantly is that we are attached to the Upadis. In other words, we're attached to the snake, and we're not seeing the rope. We would rather have an exciting story, oh, I saw a snake, whoa, you know, because that will travel well on the gossip network. I mean, let's face it, this is the way people are. They would rather have an interesting story about themselves than tell the truth. Now, I've never been like this, and I don't really understand the people who are, except theoretically <laughs> I can understand that because they are attached to excitement, they get bored when things get too quiet. But the meditator, as we went over in another previous episode, the meditator attains through stillness by using extreme determination to calm the senses. And against that calm background, the self shows up you know, there's this concept in engineering called signal-to-noise ratio. And the problem is that the senses are making so much noise that we can't detect the presence of the self. The self is the signal we're looking for. We're trying to tune in on the self. But there's so much static that we can't hear its calm, silent voice. So we miss it. And this is the problem with most meditators, or so-called meditators, that in the next verse, he says, one who has not desisted from bad conduct, whose senses are not under control, whose mind is not concentrated, and specifically, whose mind is not free from anxiety about the result of concentration, the result of meditation. Oh, I have to achieve the self. I have to get enlightened. Huh? Why? Because we compare ourselves with others. Try to keep up with the Joneses, as the saying goes. But really, we're trying to keep up with anybody that we envy, admire, want to emulate or imitate. Isn't it? So we do what they do, or we try anyway. We think what they think, you know, wear the same clothes or whatever, espouse the same beliefs. But of course, that's phony. It's completely phony. 
and the senses are making so much noise all the time. I want this. I want that. You could do this better. You could have this other thing. No, we have to tune that all out or quiet the senses somehow or other. And the best way to do that is through training. This training can take years. It can take decades because you can't really impose any external disciplines on the mind. Even though you may think, oh, I have to uh, attain a quiet mind. I have to make the mind stop chattering. Try it. Huh? Just suppress the by force of will, the inner conversation of the mind. If you do it, even for a few minutes, you will find the mind springs back with extra force. <laughs> and it becomes even noisier than it was before. So how do we do it? Through insight. We have to see very clearly and have the insight that our efforts to attain this, that, and the other thing are the cause of our suffering. Well, for one thing, effort equals ego. The more efforts we perform, the more the ego grows in strength. Because after all, who is doing the effort? Aha! <laughs> so the stronger, the more effort we make, the stronger the I gets, the ego. But of course, this is a false I. The real I is the self, the consciousness. And consciousness is always detached. Consciousness never becomes colored by its objects. Only, of course, if we see that it's looking like that. If we see through the upadi. Huh? But if we take away the upadi and we see consciousness as it is in itself, it never becomes conditioned. It never becomes really covered over. It's just like the sun. The sun is there in the sky, and clouds may come and apparently cover the sun. But actually, the sun is so far above the clouds, it never really becomes covered. Only because we have a low viewpoint. See? If we go up in an airplane, up in the stratosphere, 40,000, 50,000 feet, there aren't any clouds or what to speak of in a rocket or something. So the illusion that the self becomes covered by upadis is only because we see things through the senses or the mind. We don't see consciousness, huh? or we don't realize consciousness. We don't see reality in terms of consciousness. We see it in terms of the objects of consciousness. This is where we go wrong. This is how we get caught up in illusion. This is how we lose the story, <laughs> the plot, <laughs> the thread that brings us to ultimate realization. But by seeing things in terms of Brahman, in terms of consciousness, in terms of the uh, Brahman as the self, that leads to self-realization. Because why? It's like we're going to the self and saying, please reveal yourself. Actually, you know, you can do this. It's called Ananya Bhakti. And we have a whole series on it, of course. <laughs> Ananya Bhakti is the worship of the self as a deity. So, of course, one can worship one's own self. This is not solipsism. This is reality. This is devotion to Brahman, devotion to knowledge, jnana, devotion to truth. See, the actual truth is that we are Brahman. There is no other explanation for consciousness that makes any sense. 
You know, all these theories that the scientists come up with, you, you know, you just scratch the surface, you find all kinds of contradictions and wrong observations and wrong interpretations and so on. The real truth is that we are Brahman. We are pure consciousness alone, without an object. We don't need an object. When we accept objects, then Brahman becomes covered by Upadis. And that's when we start to lose our natural insight, our natural wisdom. So therefore, all spiritual paths recommend detachment. In fact, the very first sutra of Brahma sutras, or Vedanta sutras, Shankara's commentary goes through the qualifications for the sadhaka, one who is going to realize Brahman. And basically, in a nutshell, it's taking sannyas. One must take sannyas. One must detach from worldly activities and identifications. One must lose his idea of that I am this body or that the connections, relations, and possessions of this body are mine. This is called nirmama. I have nothing. And this is actually the qualification for realizing Brahman, because Brahman has nothing also. See? Brahman is not attached to anything, doesn't consider anything its possession, doesn't do anything. <laughs> and isn't related to anything in any way. That was discussed back in Manduki Upanishad. So, to actually realize Brahman means to stop doing completely. Huh? The Buddhists realize this, and especially the Zen people talk about non-doing. Huh? That famous poem by Basho that uh, I sit here doing nothing, and the spring comes and the grass grows all by itself. This is how you realize Brahman. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shaktihi Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.